Good morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran here in Zionsville. It is the first Sunday after Christmas, and we are glad that you are joining us for worship online this morning. Um, I do have a few announcements to share with you, just to let you know this is a pre-recorded service. Um, we had to, to do that to um, just to cover all of our bases uh, for the Christmas holidays, and um, just glad that you're with us. Uh, if you how are, is this your first time worshiping with us from home? Or um, if it's been a while since you do, have done that, know that we have an open table here at Zion Lutheran and you're welcome to set your sacred space up and put uh, bread and wine there and be ready for communion when we reach that point in the service. Uh, the church office will be open uh, next week, briefly, Monday and Tuesday, if you need assistance, the January newsletter will be mailed out to you as soon as possible, and we look forward to seeing you back for in-person worship on Sunday, January 3rd, uh, when we'll celebrate Epiphany together. At this time, that is all that I, the pre-service announcements I have to share with you all. Um, hear these words from the Psalms. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our beginning here together is in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Art the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sin is reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ thy highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh and Godhead see, hail incarnate deity. Pleased as man with us to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. And let us pray. Light of the world, shine in our lives this day. As we hear your word and as we worship, help us grow in the strength and wisdom of your love. Bless us with the faith of Simeon and the hope of Anna, that we may find your miraculous presence in our worship and in our world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. I would invite you to turn and share the peace with those around you. Peace be with you. Our first scripture reading today comes from the uh, book Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 10, through chapter 62, 
verse 3. People of Jerusalem, open your gates. Repair the road to the city and hear of its stones. Raise a banner to help the nations find their way. Here is what the Lord has said for all the earth to hear. Soon I will come and save the city of Zion and to reward, reward you. Then you, will be call, then you will be called the Lord's own people, the ones he rescued. Your city will be known as a good place to live and a city full of people. Jerusalem, I will speak up for your good and I will never be silent till you are safe and secure, sparkling like a flame. Your great victory will be seen by every nation and king. The Lord will even give you a new name. You will be a glorious crown, a royal headband for the Lord your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. The time came for Mary and Joseph to do what the law of Moses says a mother is supposed to do after her baby is born. They took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem and presented him to the Lord. Just as the law of the Lord says, each firstborn baby boy belongs to the Lord. The law of the Lord also says parents have to offer a sacrifice, giving at least a pair of doves or two young pigeons. So that is what Mary and Joseph did. At this time, a man named Simeon was living in Jerusalem. Simeon was a good man. He loved God and was waiting for him to save the people of Israel. God's spirit came to him and told him that he would not die until he had seen Christ the Lord. When Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple to do what the law of Moses said should be done for a new baby, the Spirit told Simeon to go into the temple. Simeon took the baby Jesus in his arms and praised God. Lord, I am your servant, and now I can die in peace, because you have kept your promise to me. With my own eyes I have seen what you have done to save your people, and foreign nations will also see this. Your mighty power is a light for all nations, and it will bring honor to your people Israel. Jesus' parents were surprised at what Simeon had said. Then he blessed them and told Mary, This child of yours will cause many people in Israel to fall and others to stand. The child will be like a warning sign. Many people will reject him, and you, Mary, will suffer as though you had been stabbed by a dagger. But all this will show what the people are really thinking. Then the prophet Anna was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher. She was very old, and in her youth she had been married for seven years, but her husband died, and now she was 84 years old. Night and day she served God in the temple by praying and often going without eating. At that time, Anna came in and praised God. She spoke about the child Jesus to everyone who hoped for Jerusalem to be set free. After Joseph and Mary had done everything that the law of the Lord commands, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. And the child grew. He became strong and wise, and God blessed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Do you want to have a word, um, just a time with our children this morning? Um, So when we were setting up for our um, recorded church, I hid the wise men because this is actually being recorded before Christmas Eve. And I turned to Gary, the guy you've been singing up here. I said, Gary, find the wise men. He stood right underneath them and didn't see them. And so I'm going to ask the question, do you remember where they were Christmas Eve? If you don't, or you weren't here to inside the sanctuary for Christmas Eve, we're going to get a shot of where they actually are. They're way up top, aren't they? They're walking across the top. That's kind of fun. They'll eventually make their way down to our our manger scene down here, but that'll be on Sunday, July 3rd. Keep an eye on those guys. 
right? So I want to ask you this morning, what kinds of things do you do with your pinky? Any ideas on what you do with your pinky? I could come up with a couple of things myself. Um, if I wanted to feel fancy and British, I could drink tea and have my pinky in the air, right? So that's something I could do with my pinky. Another thing uh, I have done with my pinky is when I would sit at the piano board to play piano, I love to stretch my fingers to see how many keys I could hit. And maybe you do that too, but, but, or have tried that, where you stretch that pinky and see how far you can get on that keyboard. The only other thing I could think of to come up with my pinky just in the few moments before worship is um, I would hear kids, not necessarily my boys, but girls would make a pinky, pinky promise. Pinky promise, you would lock pinkies and make a promise, right? So what is, what is a promise? What is a promise? I understand a promise to mean that I'm going to keep my word, right? So today we heard a promise that God made to Simeon that God was going to keep God's word. In the scripture we read this morning, it was um, God's spirit came to, to Simeon and told him that he would not die until he had seen Christ the Lord. Well, Simeon didn't know what he was looking for, right? He had no idea. Um, but it was the Holy Spirit that led him um, to Joseph and Mary and to, that, to the baby Jesus. And then Simeon took baby Jesus in his arms and began praising God because God had kept God's promise, right? So when Simeon finished praising God, then he turns to Joseph and Mary and offers a blessing. Man, and wouldn't that be really neat to have your baby have a blessing, Give that some thoughts. And talk with your family, if you're sitting with your family. Talk with them and ask them, Mom, Dad, when, do, when did I get my blessing? And see what they say. And Mom and Dad, it may be that you might need to give them a blessing. And I'm going to help you with that when we get to communion. Um, but talk about blessing and when that happens. And my favorite blessing to give my boys when they were little, not so much anymore, they don't mom, is what I get, because they're so much older. Um, but the favorite blessing I would give them was, uh, may God turn your lows into highs right before your very eyes. And mom and dad, if there's those kinds of days and you don't know what else to say, I highly recommend that blessing for your kiddos. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your presence in our lives and in all the ways you bless us. Help us turn and bless one another. We ask this in the name of Emmanuel, the blessing of a baby and the blessing of knowing that indeed you are God with us. Amen. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Right after college, uh, my brother uh, joined the Greek Orthodox Church. In other words, he converted to Greek Orthodoxy. And a few years ago, when he was living in Houston, we went to worship with him at his church that day. And on that particular day, there was the, a presentation, um, kind of like what we read about with Joseph and Mary and when they took Jesus into the, the temple today out of the Gospel of Luke. Um, that day at the Greek Orthodox Church, it was this baby's first visit to church. It appeared to be the firstborn child of the couple, and the baby was also male. And I will tell, to share with you that most of the liturgy, whatever the pastor spoke that day for the presentation, it was all in Greek. 
which I don't understand, but it didn't take away from that moment, not for me or my family, the power of that moment. Because what we saw was this. We saw prayers being offered to God and blessing the baby. We saw the parents of the baby crying as the pastor prayed. We saw the pastor cradling the baby and walking with it down the church aisle all the way to the front and up and into this very sacred space in the Greek Orthodox Church um, called the Holy of Holies. It is where the blood and body of Christ are also kept. It's, it's in that area. Um, the motions, everything that the, the pastor or priest did that day was done in threes. The prayers were offered in threes, and three times they circled around the altar. It was a beautiful and moving service. It's not many times you get to see a presentation like that. But then I remembered another presentation that I witnessed um, decades ago when I was in seminary serving uh, Webster Groves Christian Church Disciples of Christ, uh, which is uh, located um, in a suburb just outside of St. Louis. Um, the Disciples of Christ practice a believer's baptism, meaning that the kids are baptized at around the age of 12. Instead of, um, they do that instead of having what we, like what we have, a separated baptism of an infant and then a confirmation of one's faith at age 12. Um, so on, in the, the Disciples of Christ Church, on the baby's first Sunday to church, the baby and the parents receive a blessing and the parents promise to raise the child to know Christ. And reflecting on those events, um, led me to think about things and it led me to this question why don't we in the lutheran church do that why don't we do that why don't we celebrate the first time parents bring a baby to worship i know right now covid but but why didn't we do that before and and in the time to come in that hopefully 2021 in that future when parents start bringing their babies back to church, why not? Why not bless babies when they come to church for the very first time? After all, many times, weeks or months and sometimes years go by before babies are baptized these days. My own children, and I am a pastor, but my own children were 17 months and 18 months before they were baptized mostly because we always had to coordinate two and three, uh, four sets of grandparents who lived out of state, and we had to work with multiple travel schedules and holiday events. But wouldn't it be nice for the church to recognize the baby's first time to come to worship um, and to be presented to God and be blessed? And wouldn't it be nice for parents who were adjusting um, to this new person in the household who has just turned their lives upside down, who these parents who are running on very little sleep, who really feel in need of a little blessing, get one when they came to church and feel the support of a community of folks just like you. Hmm. Imagine what it would be like to call that kind of faith community home. That would be some kind of presentation experience for both the baby and the parents. And I wonder how it would be both the same and yet different from the presentation of Jesus in today's Gospel from Luke. Our text from Luke chapter 2 jumps ahead in the life of Jesus from the shepherds glorifying God to one verse about the circumcision of Jesus to the next 40 days after his birth. After circumcision, the next thing required by Jewish law was that Mary and Joseph had to present their firstborn son at the temple and make a sacrifice of thanksgiving to God. 
Now, a little history for you. Um, when women in Bible times um, gave birth to a male child, they had to wait 40 days before entering the temple so that a priest might declare them pure or clean once again. Childbirth and, and any other blood issue a woman had made them unclean. Um, and then if a woman gave birth to a female child, the wait was doubled to 80 days because um, boys were their preferred um, child the preferred gender of child in a patriarchal society. So what we hear um, in the Gospel of Luke, it's 40 days um, beyond Jesus' birth, and he was 40 days old when he first entered the temple. And Mary and Joseph offered as a sacrifice what the law required, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now this type of sacrifice um, was an indication that they lived in poverty, um, wealthy couples made the sacrifice of a lamb. And while they were there presenting their child to God, they happened to meet a man named Simeon. He's a man described as righteous and devout. And the name Simeon means hearing. And he indeed was one who listened not just with his ears, but with his whole being. Three times our text mentions that the Holy Spirit rested on him, that the Holy Spirit revealed to him, and that he was guided by the Holy Spirit. And so there are Mary and Joseph in the temple doing what was required of them, and Simeon enters the temple and is seemingly guided right to them. We don't know if Mary and Joseph actually knew Simeon or if he was a stranger to them. But Simeon takes the baby Jesus in his arms and begins praising God for the life that the child would lead. In all probability, Joseph and Mary are stunned by what just happened. But Simeon continues by telling Joseph and Mary more about what Jesus would do and how people would react to him. As he says, this child is destined for the falling and rising of man in many in Israel. And then he tells them that they would experience great pain and sadness. And a sword will pierce your side too as a result of Jesus' calling. Mary and Joseph had little time to react to this news as they were met by yet another person in the temple, a woman named Anna, whose name means grace. And Anna was married only seven years before her husband died. She had no children. So as a widowed, childless woman who was 84 years old, she knew exactly what it meant to live and survive by the grace of God. Anna is described as a prophet who seemingly is overhearing what Simeon is saying to Jesus. And so she joins Simeon, Mary, and Joseph and immediately begins praising God for the baby. And then passerbys. Um, she turns to them and the temple and begins to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel, is what the text says. And then we read that when Mary and Joseph left the temple, they returned to Galilee, to Nazareth, probably with great hope that life would then return to normal. And Jesus grew and became strong, and the favor of God was upon him, and life for them for Joseph, Mary, and Jesus would actually be anything but normal. But they went with the blessings of God and with blessings from people, Simeon and Anna, in their community of faith. Now it is at this point on this day of presentation as we are worshiping from our homes this Sunday and no one is actually present here in worship other than those who are working um, that I am going to ask you a rather strange question. Have you given any thought to your own presentation that day when you were blessed as you came into God's presence? Maybe that day, on that day you were a baby, maybe you were a bit older, Maybe it was the day you confirmed your faith or became a member of this or another faith community. Maybe you grew up in a church where they called it turning your life over to Christ and you walked the aisle and claimed your own blessing. I want you to give some thought to this. Who were the people around you that day and who was it that blessed you? Or have those people who have blessed you appeared in your life along the way, along your faith journey? Who 
modeled for you? Who gave you an image or a shape showing you or showing us what it means to be a faithful person in Christ? You see, we can either look at the presentation or my presentation, your presentation, our presentation as a once-in-a-lifetime event, or we can look around at all of those folks around us who present themselves to us and bless us with words of encouragement and prayers, acts of kindness, even words of actual blessing. I want you to reflect and continue to reflect, as we all have been doing, on how different this Advent and Christmas season has felt in here this past year. And I also want you to reflect on how different life here at Zion has been. And and I hope that you can see how you, as well as how this faith community has come along and moved from being a place where people just show up to a place where people continue to grow up into the disciples of Christ that God calls us to be. I would invite you to look around and look within and see what God has done in your lives. For one thing, I think we all have discovered how important it is to be in community with one another, to check in with one another, to keep track of how we are all doing and holding each other in prayer because this past year has been emotionally and physically and spiritually hard. Some of us have rediscovered the importance of practicing our faith as a family unit. I have heard so many stories about how you gather in your recliners or on sofas at home, what you use for communion, what that time together as a family unit practicing your faith together has meant for you. And truth be told, I know that some of us have also struggled to practice our faith as a family unit, mostly because it feels so different, so odd to take that kind of responsibility in our own homes. So many of us are used to having help, support from this community of faith to help us along the way. But right there, in naming what has been so hard, what we name what we miss most, and who we miss most, because we have come to value what our faith community offers us and how we are blessed by one another. I would invite you to have a conversation with your family members who might be present with you and worship today at home, or if you are worshiping at home alone, then phone a friend and talk about those people in your lives who present themselves to you and bless you for who you are and where you are on your faith journey. I would invite us, I would invite you to even um, give thanks for them in a prayer, and I'm going to invite us into a time of prayer um, as well. Holy Emmanuel, On this last Sunday of the year, we sit reflecting on so many things that happened or didn't happen this past year, where we have succeeded and where we have not, and where we have grown as a result. In all these reflections, we can see your presence in our lives, nudging us, guiding us, lifting us up. And we also see your presence in those who have been presented in our lives, in their love, their guidance, and sometimes discipline. And so as we take stock of our lives, we offer you our thanksgiving for all those people you have placed in our lives. Again, some of them have blessed us because they are a blessing, and some of them have blessed us because they have challenged us to grow. For all the ways and in all the faces and in all the places that you come to us as Emmanuel, we give you thanks and praise, and we ask that you help us in our awareness of your presence, your call, your guidance in our lives as individuals as well as a faith community. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen. this time I would invite you to join with me in professing what we believe using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son, our Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He, he descended, descended to hell. hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we're going to move into a time of prayer, and I'll offer a petition and then close it with, um, Hear us, O God, and would invite you to respond. Your mercy is great. Joining our voices with the song of angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislatures grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Today we especially lift up in prayer Carolyn Heidemann, Milroy Weinert, Earl and Janet Rosenbaum, Robert Jeske, Christian and Summer Buck, Allison Krausen, and God, we ask that you hear the prayers that we even lift up from our hearts, from where we are. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Adopt us into your family, O oh God. Bless our elders with peace and joy, the same peace and joy that Simeon and Anna had. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. 
connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy Mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O God, according to your word. For all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. As we come to that time of offering, I know I asked last Sunday, we talked last Sunday about um, offering what we have of ourselves to God, our time, our talent, and our treasure And I would encourage you to continue to think about what you offer, not just as as something that you offer, but as a blessing. And in what way do your time, your talent, and your treasure bless others? And so as we think about our offerings, as you might be sending your offerings to church, there will be information there up on the screen. Um, We're here for you. Um, Just call us when you need us. And um, if there's an emergency, we are here for you as well. Um, But let us receive those offerings of our time, our talent, and treasure as they are a blessing to others, even as we hear our offering of song today. O beautiful star of Bethlehem, Shining afar through shadows dim, giving the light for those who long have gone. Guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawns. Give us the lamp to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine. Beautiful star of hope and rest For the redeemed, the good and the blessed Yonder in glory when the crown is won Jesus is now the star we find Brighter and brighter he will shine Beautiful star of Bethlehem shine on oh beautiful star of bethlehem shine upon us until the glory dawn give us the lamp to light the way unto the land of perfect day Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on, shine on. Thank you, Gary. This time uh, we gather uh, around the table and we move to that time of Holy Communion and would ask that you get your elements ready. Um, I am going to do a a little introduction, and then I am going to tell the sacred story, the words of institution, and lead us then um, into the Lord's Prayer, and then I will walk you through um, the bread and the wine, and we'll, we'll eat together. So the word is revealed in a manger, in a simple, in simple bread and wine at this table, I would invite you, come meet Christ in this meal. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus also took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This time I would invite you to take your bread and hold it up in front of you and hear these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And then I would invite you to take the cup and hear these words. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Now, if you happen to be at home and your children are with you or your grandchildren, I would invite you to call them over. And put your hands on them and bless them. We'll use the blessing that I'm giving you, or you can tune me out and give them your own blessing for what you think it is they need to hear. But right now, let's lay hands on their children and grandchildren and offer them this blessing. May you always know the power and presence of God in your lives from those who surround you with love. Amen. And for everyone, receive this blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you have come to us in the child of Bethlehem in this bread and cup and in your answer to all of our hopes and you are in your offer of peace, deeper than any truce, truer than the upheaval that surrounds us. You have comforted us with your promise and your presence so that we too may make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Again, as uh, right before I give you the benediction, I do hope those of you who do uh, join us in worship um, in person that to see you on Sunday, uh, January 3rd, we look forward to that. We'll have special blessings uh, for you to receive here to take home to bless your home for the new year. Um, um, So I would invite you to do that, um, to be here with us. And if not, you'll receive those from us um, in the mail or we'll post them. um, Actually, they'll be in your newsletter. I'll make sure they go in the January newsletter as well. So receive this benediction. May Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaim joy through the angels and sent the shepherds with good news and led the, the magi by a star, bless you this day. Through the word made flesh. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. 
While shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heaven There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and Shepherds feared and trembled When low above the earth Rang out the angel chorus That hailed our Savior's birth Go tell it on the mountain Over the hill and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born in the lonely manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sent a salvation, a blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain, at Jesus As we move to our dismissal here of late, when we've been in person, we've been doing it the left side of the church and the right side of the church. Um, but I'm going to invite us at home to do it, uh, female voices and male voices, um, or you can pick your part. Um, but um, Gary, would you join with me in doing that? I'm gonna, do you want to lead? All right. Okay. Go in peace as God's people. Grounded in faith. Go in peace as God's people. Gathered in love. Go in peace as God's people. Engaging, Engaging the, the world, world with God's, God's amazing, amazing grace. grace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.